Middle East is in chaos, you know that. A coalition of Arab nations attacking Iranian-backed rebels in Yemen. This while the nuclear talks push right up to a deadline later today. Warships now adding their firepower is the first time as jets pound rebel positions for a sixth day now. U.S. standing mostly on the sidelines, giving logistics support but no direct military action. Max Booth, senior fellow in National Security Studies of the Council of Foreign Relations, the author of Invisible Armies, Epic History of Guerrilla Warfare. And sir, good morning to you and welcome back here to America's Newsroom. I took attention to your piece you had last week uh, in the Wall Street Journal. I know you are against this Iranian deal in a significant way. I know you also believe that the president's trying to realign the world and the nations and the relationships that we have in the world. Given that, can you find an intellectual way or a reason for why the president would pursue this deal in Iran that folks like you cannot see that would be better for America and the world? Well, I think it's pretty clear that the president wants to pull the U.S. back out of the Middle East, and he thinks there is an opportunity here to turn Iran from being our enemy into being our friend, as in fact Iran was prior to 1979, before the Islamic Revolution occurred. So he is trying to do this, I think, this massive deal with Iran that not only includes a nuclear component, but also de facto trying to draw Iran into a broader uh, security system in the Middle East. Right. Now, is, I think that's that, a tragically flawed vision, yeah. but I think that is his vision. Did you think it will work? I mean, it might, it might be a flawed vision, but right now, does it work? It's not going to work for two reasons. A, Iran is implacably opposed to the United States. I mean, they still have leaders who chant death to America every single day. They are not going to get along with us. And the other problem is that the more that the U.S. is seen as tilting towards Iran, which is very much the perception throughout the Middle East right now, the more that is the perception, the more that Sunnis will be have a violent backlash and reaction. You're seeing part of that play out in Yemen right now with the bombing that is being undertaken by the Saudis and and the Egyptians to try to stop this, what they see as this Iranian power grab. And what you will see, and what you are seeing, in fact, in Iraq and Syria, is that because Sunnis are so worried about Iranian domination, about Iranian power, they are being drawn into the clutches of terrorist groups like ISIS and the al Nusra Front. So the more that we are seen as backing the Iranian power play, the more it simply fuels the, the dynamic of violence and extremism in the well, I mentioned your, your piece in the Wall Street Journal. Why do you believe the president wants to fundamentally change the U.S. involvement in this part of the world? Well, obviously, he came into office opposing the war in Iraq. He's opposed, he said repeatedly, that he's opposed to this heavy American involvement in the Middle East. He wants to shift our resources to the Pacific. And so he thinks this is a way that we can do it, that if we get out of the middle of the Middle East and, and, and stop trying to do so much to try to block Iranian power, that... Uh, we can then downsize our commitment. Unfortunately, we've seen in the last few years uh, President Obama has been trying to do just that, and the result is not a sudden outbreak of, of peace and people getting along and singing kumbaya. The result is a rise of radicalism with a terrorist state from ISIS. The result is a rise of Iranian dominance and influence in Syria and Iraq as well as Yemen. It's a very violent and dangerous situation. So I think that his vision is is one that is... Uh, bringing us to ruin in this region. Wow. Um, given that logic, all those decisions have now boomeranged back um, in his face, essentially.